Now something huge happens in the life of Maria after she's pregnant and she gives birth. What happens after Maria gives birth? Something very disturbing happens. Any idea? After she gives birth to Ibrahim, something very disturbing happens. What? There is an accusation. Remember that man Jureyh that the Muqawqas sent with Maria and her sister Shireen? Uh, Jureyh was the cousin and the relative of Maria. So he was a relative and when Maria was staying in the suburb of Medina al Aliya, outside of Medina, he would check on her. He was a relative, he would go serve her, see if she needs anything, bring her water, bring her wood. When she gave birth to Ibrahim, some people accused Maria of adultery, God forbid. And you know what their claim was? That child Ibrahim is not the son of the Prophet. He's the son of who? Jureyh. Now Sunnis and Shia have different perspectives here. Let me read to you the Shia version and then we'll talk about some Sunni hadiths. In Tafsir al-Qummi, Ali ibn Ibrahim al-Qummi, volume 2, page 99, there's a hadith from Zurara, one of the companions of Al-Imam al-Baqir and al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He says, I heard Al-Imam al-Baqir say the following. He says, when Ibrahim died, the Prophet became very, very disturbed and upset and he was very sorrowful. So Aisha said to the Prophet, Why are you so upset? Why are you crying so much? فَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا إِبْنُ جريح. He's the son of Jureyh, why are you crying? What did she mean by that when she said he's the son of Jureyh? Maria had an affair with Jureyh and that's not your son. What did the Prophet immediately do when Maria said that? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, when Aisha said this about Maria, what did the Prophet immediately do? What? No, he did not deny it. He did not tell her to take it back. No. He immediately commanded Imam Ali alayhi salam. He told him, Ali, take the sword and go and kill Jureyh. I'll analyze this, don't worry, we'll analyze this. Yeah, Shia hadith. Sunni hadith also says this part too, we'll get to it. Imam Ali takes the sword from the Prophet with a command to slaughter who? Jureyh for this big crime, supposed crime. Jureyh the Coptic, he was a Christian, remember, Maria became Muslim but Jureyh may have stayed a Coptic, we don't know. He was in a garden close to Maria. The Imam السلام, knocked on, at the door of the Bustan, the Ha'at, the uh, garden. Jureyh came to open the door, but then he saw the anger in the face of Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام. So he started running, afraid of the look of Amir al-Mu'mineen. So the Imam السلام, jumped over the wall, he entered the garden and he started chasing. Jureyh, Jureyh is running, Imam Ali السلام, is chasing him. So Jureyh fearing for his life, he climbs a palm tree, he climbs up a palm tree to save for his life, but then he falls from one of the branches of the palm tree. When he falls, he was wearing a garment, you know the Arab uh, garment at the time, you know you don't wear uh, basically a pajama or an underwear, you just wear a garment. So when he fell from the palm tree, the garment was lifted and his entire private area was exposed. This is in uh, Sunni hadith and in Shia hadith, this part. His entire private area was exposed, Imam Ali was seeing. Imam Ali noticed that Jureyh has no private parts. A deformity in his uh, biological creation, he completely had no private part. So he stops, he doesn't kill him. He goes back to the Prophet he tells him, Ya Rasulullah, when you command me a command like to kill somebody and if I find something unusual, is it okay for me to stop and not execute the command and come back and consult you or I have to go and execute the command no matter what? The Prophet said, no, you have the right to come and consult me. It's like, what, what happened? It's like, Ya Rasulullah, something strange happened. 
I went to kill Jureh just like you told me, then he fell from the tree, the garment got exposed, uh, you know got covered, uncovered as he was falling and I saw that he completely has no private part, in Arabic this is called mamsuh or majboob, completely no private part, Imam al-Baqir is narrating this hadith, when Imam Ali salam said this to the Prophet, the Prophet says, Alhamdulillah alladhi yasrufu anna su'a ahl al-bayt, all praise is due to Allah for showing the status of the Ahl al-bayt and from protecting us from any evil. Now a couple of points here, first of all according to this hadith, who accused Maria? Aisha. Number two, what's, what is this hadith stating? How did Allah show that Aisha was lying? Through Imam Ali, well what happened? So how do we know after this incident that Maria did not do anything wrong? Imam Ali confirmed that Juraih has no private part, in fact Juraih was brought into the mosque and it seems according to some traditions the companions verified that he, he has a deformity and he has no reproductive organs, he just doesn't have any any of those organs. So that proved that Aisha's claim that Maria became pregnant from Juraih is a fabrication, biologically she couldn't get pregnant, and Allah protected the dignity and the honor of the Prophet's family by exposing this plot. Now there are some troubling aspects of this hadith, right? What is a troubling aspect? Exactly, the Prophet Aisha says something out of line, the Prophet tells Imam Ali, go kill him. How does this work? Yes, how do you justify that? So the Prophet already knew through Ilm al-Ghayb, but then how do you give such an order? What's the point of giving such an order? Like what's the wisdom behind it? He already knew. What? He already knew it wasn't happening. Yeah, he already knew, but why give such a command to Ma'ali, go and kill him? Yeah. The Prophet could have said, let's investigate. He said Aisha was serious. Ah, to indicate the seriousness of Aisha's accusation. Sometimes when someone says something false and something huge, it's expected of you to show anger, okay let me get to the bottom of this, Ali go kill him right now, so you draw the attention of everyone in Medina, we have a huge case, the Prophet has ordered someone to be killed, everyone's now watching, and then Imam Ali is going to uncover the plot, and everyone now sees how Aisha made that accusation, it was an amazing way for the Prophet to expose the plot. How do we know this? Hadith from Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein. Uh, from Imam Abi Abdullah Sadiq alayhi salam, Abdullah ibn Bukair, one of the companions of Imam Sadiq, he told him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, when the Prophet commanded Imam Ali to kill that Coptic man, he knew she was lying, Aisha, didn't he? He says yes, he knew, he said okay then why didn't the Prophet tell Imam Ali could go investigate, why did he tell him go and kill her? Imam Sadiq says no, he knew exactly, he says the Prophet did that so Aisha can see the seriousness of what she did and that through lying she's about to get a man, a Muslim man killed. So by the way we know from this hadith that Juraih the Coptic became a Muslim, right? That a man is getting killed because of such false accusations. When you accuse someone of indecency like that, sometimes death can result. So Aisha realized the seriousness of what you said. So the Prophet gave that order to make it dramatic. The Prophet deliberately tried, wanted to dramatize the whole incident. Why? To bring light to the ugly act that Aisha did by accusing her and to let everyone know in the society and community that the Prophet's family is pure and that Maria did no such thing and that Ibrahim is the son of the Prophet.